What's going on, everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're here for episode four of our NCAA Football 14 College Football Revamped Create a Team Dynasty with the Hollywood Tech Honey Hunters. We are here in year one of our school being a football school for the first time in history of a team of athletes with no one football experience. And we have somehow stumbled into a three and five record, which puts us not last in our division. Puts us not last in the Sun Belt Conference, and we're actually ahead of two of the teams we're going to play in today's episode. We have Georgia Southern this week. We have App State the week after that. Then I think it's Marshall, which, I mean, they're having a hell of a year. They're 4-0 in the division. And we finish up today's episode. We are finishing the regular season. And honestly, I can't remember how long NCAA took in the offseason, so I might actually do the offseason as well. But I'm not. Don't hold me to it. We're for sure at least getting to the conference championship game. Maybe we'll do the off season as an episode. I don't know right yet. But we are working our way, and I'm I'm rattled. I'm rattled because I went into our recruiting and we had some extra points, right? So the rules for recruiting this year is they have to be three star athletes unless they're offensive linemen. Then we have to get linemen that are three star and below that were like athletically gifted enough to be pretty much be classified as athletes, right? Like look at the two linemen that we did go after: six seven two ninety eight. We might not even get him. And we have 6'3", 269. So, like, that might as well just be an athlete that can play different positions. Before I show you the thing that made my jaw drop, might even make the thumbnail, uh, I had some extra points, and I looked at some of the three-star athletes that still had low commitment percentages. And I mean, there's four or five of the guys. I fully scouted them because we just had a bunch of points. And I actually added a new one to our big boy here, and that is Bruce Rodriguez. Interesting player, 5'9", 183. Remember that profile. And I, I do think if we're aggressive enough, it's not going to take a whole lot of time to make ground on this prospect. A couple big schools after him, but 5'9", 183. But he comes in with 82 trucking, 88 stiff arm. What? Looking at him, this guy, he looks like he'll be a safety for us. Free safety potentially, 84 pursuit. 75 press, 71 zone, 75 tackle, 76 take power. Looks pretty well rounded. Wish there maybe was a little bit more speed there, but I was like, hell yeah, that's a versatile player for us to add to the squad. Now, this is what I got to show you guys. Maybe I've just been out of the loop of NCAA for so long that, like, maybe this is not as rare as I think it is. But Fred Smith looks like, as right now, we have a lead over Wisconsin. Hopefully, they don't start to pick up and close the gap. This would be the biggest recruit we could get. Eh, it's a guard, right? You really want to hang your hat on a guard? Well, first of all, he's incredible looking. 77. All right. We got plus eight. He's a diamond. Look at the acceleration. Have you ever seen a, a, a lineman? Like, listen, like Lane Johnson, Taron Armstead, Fred Smith. 96 acceleration on a 270-pound guard. What is this guy? At this rate, I'm going to make my running back next year. 96 acceleration? I can't sell out any more than I possibly can to try to get him to join our school. But I will say right now, as there's, we got, you know, at least from now to the regular season, things can move. The guys can go up and down, change their schools a little bit, fluctuate. If we end up losing out on Fred Smith, I'm going to be genuinely heartbroken. Before we get into a four-game stretch here to close out our inaugural season, just showing you where we are at statistically, uh, Bob Badolski, again, all these players have never played football before, have really uh, lacking technical ability. Bob Badolski has 97 throw power, literally nothing else. Has 11 touchdowns, 8 picks. I think it's pretty impressive. He has more touchdowns than interceptions. Chris McCool, the track athlete, is sitting at 700 yards and 10 touchdowns. Easily the best player on this offense He's a track and field star. That is a sport that has had success in having players go play football. Again, I compare him maybe to Raheem Mostert, especially when he was at Purdue, getting a lot of success out of Chris McCool. Hopefully he does not transfer this offseason. To Quiz Shaq, basketball player. Again, basketball player playing tight end. It's happened before. So he is following you know certain blueprints, and he, he's finding success. Uh, we have Tito Williams from the track and field team. Uh, 99 speed. He is big play for us with 32 yards per reception, almost 500 yards and five tuds on the defensive side it's been a mixed bag i think it's fair to say it's been a mixed bag we've had some stellar performances bd wells power lifter out of virginia atfl's three sacks seven tfl's three sacks 
for Talon Wilkinson. Uh, he's been a really nice player for us. DeMar Kane. It's Kane. It's got to be Kane. He's been hurt like all year. He has four TFLs and two sacks in two games. So I, I do think our defensive line's getting after it a little bit. We have Cordarius Rido has three interceptions. That's an impressive for a corner that is under a 60 overall. And I think that needs to be considered when you look at all those stats. All of our team, for the most part, is 65 or below. Most of them are 60 and below. We're doing pretty well. So today we got Georgia Southern. We're going to be underdogs in all of these matchups. But we have Georgia Southern. We have App State next week. A bye. This is where we're going to hopefully get Fred Smith locked in. We got Week 13 Marshall, Week 14 Southern Miss, and that'll take us to the end of the year. I think we can get another win or two. Hopefully we do. Luckily, there's no more recruiting visits, so the pressure is not necessarily there that if we lose, it's going to snowball into something even worse than just taking an L with our clearly the worst team in all college football. So let's go ahead and see if we can shock the world once or twice to close up the year, maybe get to five wins. I'm experimenting a little bit with the uh, the background sound. I like having like some on the field, some game sounds. But I have felt it's been maybe a little overpowering. So uh, over the next this game, this video, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna decrease it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Personal foul face mask. Hey, there's our on time on cue. Face mask call on the opening drive. You know, good pursuit. Wilkinson and Kane making a play of the backfield. Teddy Frazier there as well. There we go. Make good pursuit. Good bend. Don't break on this opening drive. Almost jumped it. Ah, that is going to be one. That I think right out wants back, but we have hold them to a field goal attempt. That's a win. They might shank it too. Y'all know college kickers. Like a scared cat. You never know. You never know, baby. Get the passing game going here a little bit. Oh. I do hate when we find out really like on the first drive. That our offensive line is going to be severely overmatched. It's at this point, in case you're new, our offensive line's average rating is probably 50, 58. Definitely not 60. So, uh, insta sacks happen. Yes, for a second big stand here. We're gonna we're gonna go in coverage here with Teddy Frazier. Oh, I think uh, we just encroached. Oh, it's a false start. Back them up. Gives us five more. That might actually be worse. That gives them more time, more offense. Can't talk. We got to be in a third and nine. Trying not to bend or even break in this situation. We're going to go Teddy Frazier, the Bob Sledder in the middle of the field. They're going to check it down. He gets a clothesline from hell. And we hold Georgia Southern to another field goal attempt. They were missing that one. He's definitely picking up something with slants. Savage calling it in a couple times. Hopefully it's not a... Go into the well one too many times. I told you quiz Shaq. Lose two yards because he's a clumsy oaf. We might look at going back to him here. Look, turn your fucking head around. You got like a 97 inch wingspan. Come on, came at him in the backfield, and he just trucks over. Oh, we still get the sack. Okay. I appreciate that. High tower from the safety spot. That was Kane with a hell of a pass rush. Got double teamed by the guard and the running back. Made something happen. Hell yeah. Big time TFL. 
Ricky Hightower from the safety spot. That looked like there might have been a missed face mask. Because you usually don't miss those ones on us, but our defense has been very impressive. Let's go Kane. He feels like a man possessed. That's that's gotta be oh he's oh my god, but he's making play. We'll burn a timeout here. See if we can get some points before halftime. Now we hold him to a field goal. Another long-ish one for a shaky kicker. False start. Back him back. Another five. That could put him in punt territory. Damn. Oh, no good. Honestly, we just got to hope that uh, they press Williams. This is pretty much, pretty much our home run play. That's all we got. We got that, and sometimes Chris McCool will, will make someone miss and get a big run. But if you press with no safety, I got 99 speed, 99 acceleration, 99 agility, 56 catching. But he has all those other things. He's that wide open. It's very hard for him to drop the ball. What a dot. And you know what? For how bad our offense has been, this is all so far on our defense. Our defense, I think it's eight first downs to two. And that two being that one that we just got for the touchdown. It's been our defense, battling, clanging and banging, holding them to five, giving us a chance. Oh, Wilkinson gets the sack. Pressure from Kane. That tandem for both being against sub-60. They're playing outstanding football. Damn, man. He's almost like welcoming the pressure from Kane so that he can bail... And just tuck it and run. I'm just sick and tired of every team we face this year has had like a dual threat quarterback. Like the one with you give us a pocket passer, I think we're holding up pretty well in coverage. We just don't have the discipline, the technique. Oh! We don't have the discipline, we don't have the technique. The pass rush is stay with our lane integrity. But you throw a double coverage duck up there. Hightower, who's two TFLs and a sack, gets the pick. He might be a player of the week performance. Oh, please. Please press. Pre please, please, pretty please now. I might still hit it. You silly. We're still going to send it. No! Oh! <laughs> Let's go! Shattering the record that he set a couple weeks ago. Two catches. He's having a Randy Moss type performance. Points anyway, shape or form, be it field goal or tud, would be gigantic. There's a drop. And I think we know what we're going to dial up here. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if we have found out... Probably him with this ends as long as Tito Williams is going. If we find out that these don't got speed, like if they're out there trotting out like 86, 85 speed corner, even worse, which could be the case, we'd be foolish. Oh, they put a safety there. That would have been a pick if we chucked that one. Take the incompletion, play good defense. Oh. We decapitate their quarterback, but still able to get the pitch out. What? Just... Sunbelt, they're awkward offenses. That's piss poor. Piss poor tackling. Third and eight. I. Rich, maybe? Do it yourself, Bob! Do it yourself! Go another hard run. Seven yards in at two field goal range. Second and six with love. Something easy to shack over the middle. Some beast. He falls for he just you know if he literally catches that and falls for it seven feet, he's getting us the first down. 
And whoever five is here. Ben Josue. Is that a real guy? Like, is that guy in the league right now? And I've never heard of him. Did he legally change his name to Micah Parsons? Ben Josue. There's no way that's real. That's a Juco transfer. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob! That's 6-6. Six, six, 270. Machine in open space. The elegance. The grace. The destruction. Got ourselves a third and seven just over midfield. A first down will secure the dub. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my wide receiver deep. If we can hit it, we're going to hit it. It's over. Too much speed. Too much speed. And as much as I like to think our defense kept us in it in the first half, given the fact our first two drive offensively were horrific, I think there's an element of our offense did their job. Our offense was scoring points so that Georgia Southern, oh, we missed it, has to throw the football. They can't run their gimmicky run offense, which they want to. They have to throw the football to get back into the game. Clearly not a strength of this team. We force a, a turnover. Get in the garbage time score. Run it up. Run it up, baby. What a win. Offensively, best performance all season. I don't think we're bowl eligible, but we're playing like it. Outstanding victory. That's the first time I think that like we could we could truly shock well like Tito Williams, a Randy Moss-esque Vikings stat line. Four catches, 200 yards, three tuds. So outstanding all around. 200 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Our best game for Bob Podolsky. Also had the rushing touchdown. Chris McCool, we're going to ignore the fact that he had f almost 50 of those 82 closing out the game in garbage time because that was an outstanding job. Georgia Southern could not run the football against him. Uh, receiving Tito Williams just an all-time, averaging 50 yards per reception is insane. Defensively, got some place. We got four sacks. Wilkinson, Kane, Gilchrist, and Ricky Hightower. We had a hell of a game. Seven tackles, two TFLs, a sack, and a pick. Can we play Georgia Southern every week? The dominoes are starting to fall. As far as recruiting is concerned, we did get Jeff Sanders, who is projected to be a cornerback for our squad. However, the inverse of that, we did lose a potential corner recruit in Gerald Brooks. So we gained Sanders, DB, White Lightning DB, Diamond, which is great. We put in the work. We lose out on Gerald Brooks, who was definitely not a Diamond, but it was certainly intriguing to potentially get a 6'4", 185 corner. We entered the Bruce Rodriguez sweepstakes late, but making a little push here. Probably next week, get inside this top five. Week 11, we got App State coming off a win. We got a little bit of momentum, and it's not just in this building, outside the building. That is outside of the FCS games, which don't count. The first time Lee Corso has predicted the Hollywood Tech Honey Hunters to get a dub. And it's against App State. We're having a bad year at 2-7. and seven, But probably after Coastal Carolina, they're the most talented roster in the Sun Belt. So I think we're not going to buy into this hype. We have a very, very difficult game coming up. And if our fullback gets this block on the edge, this could be a big-time gainer. Where's the 97 speed? That's a house call. Third and five. Two of our three play calls were slants. Our coach knows what works. Fucking Taylor Swift over here again. Pasmore taking up his camera time. Punt. All right, they got most of that back. Cameron People. Is he in the league right now? I don't think. Maybe CFL. Third and five. App State going to stop when they needed to. Let's see if we can do the same. We'll go BD Wells. I think App State probably has the highest rate offensive line in the Sun Belt. So I won't be surprised if it's going to be difficult to get some pressure. But our defense 
gets off the field. What a tackle. He's in the league, DeMarco Jackson. Saints, I believe. Hell of a play. All right, let's test their speed out here. At least we have an opportunity to test their speed. You know where we're going. We're pretty much going to close our eyes, hopefully get enough time just to utilize all 97 of that throw power. Oh, we get hit. That's not good. Oh, my God. Off the deflection. That's Sean Jolly. Their slot corner. Yep. Uh, I don't hate it, though. I mean, I hate it. But I don't. That's a drop. Tito Williams had his hands on the football. That 56 catching showing its ugly head right there. Oh, no. Come on, Ricky Tyre. Your last line of defense. Oh, Frazier saves the touchdown. Still an explosive 50-plus yard run for Cameron Peoples. He certainly is a Peoples who can run. Untouched. Pretty sure Chase Bryce was a pocket passer, so maybe just every team's like, we're just going to run it. Our quarterback's dual threat when we play Hollywood Tech. Fuck me, man. Well, last week's, the last game was fun, huh? Georgia Southern was was fun. Why did Corsa have to fucking pick us? Motivate App State. We are going to get smacked. At the risk of throwing another pick. This is kind of all we got. We're a one-trick pony offense. It doesn't look like there's going to be a safety over there. Why don't we just test inside? We go to someone else. We go to Uncon Jams. 46 yards. Second to go, we got stick. I was close to being a pick. I think we're four down territory here. I don't got to get a touchdown. Field goal does nothing. We got to get a good play. We got to go shotgun. That's the thing. I just don't have, I don't have money play. Let's go empty stick. See if we could spread them out a little bit. I would love to just fire this into jams. Hell of a play call, Coach Savage. That's insane. My defensive end. First of all, terrible play by Wilkinson. Second of all, as we get the face mask, because he's probably guessed, my other defensive end was chasing that running back, caught him from behind. But of course, yanked him and ripped him down by his goddamn face mask. Yep. Hopefully these athletes, hopefully this recruiting class, that we get in, we're trying to prioritize tackling. Our run defense can't get worse. We go biggest run of the game. Crease McCool, gain of 15. Don't know where the scoreboard went, but uh, score's not important anymore in this game, I don't think. All right, don't know. Down distance. I know it's fourth down. We're going to go with the C4 toss. It's... Yep. I'm going to say, if they get a touchdown here, I'm just going to sim out this game because uh, this is bothering me that I don't know the time, the down, the distance. Like, what is this? The technological issues? Scoreboard's down. We got to go off in-house. 
Hopefully, uh, this has not come uh, back up its ugly head. How is there still this much time remaining in the game? I thought it would have been midway through the fourth quarter. There's still six more drives left. Well, you know, when you... Power got cut to 42 to 7, huh? Do I even bother looking at the stats? Two picks, three picks. Sim pick there for Podolski. After a great game that was very short-lived. Why did they pick App State? Couldn't run the ball. Shout out Jams. Had a decent performance. Five catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown. But thank God the scoreboard got destroyed. Because we, we don't want to see any more of this. Right or by week. So, pretty much the only thing we can do is analyze our remaining recruits. We have now leapfrogged all these schools on Bruce Rodriguez. Which is fairly impressive because we've only been here for three weeks. Uh... Don't look like we're getting David Edmonds. Phillip still is firmly coming towards us. This is the this is the worry. Wisconsin's done nothing but increase the push to get Fred Smith. And if we don't get Fred Smith, again, I'm gonna be I'm gonna literally be depressed. Fuck off! You're telling me, you're telling me. They would have got him in the lead for one week, and that was enough for him to jump ship. They had him in for one week, and that was somehow to get like a 2,000 point swing. Nearly. 1,700 point swing, almost 2,000. Fucking buying what? Three Escalades and two Chargers? Oh, uh, then we just played the best team on our whole schedule, seven and four Marshall. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. They are a tough, really good defense, really good pass defense. They beat anyone good? Coastal Virginia Tech, Texas State stomped them. Georgia Southern. They beat App State, Southern Miss, UA. I mean, they haven't really beat anyone good. They're just handling their business in the Sun Belt. But if we play like we did against App State, it's going to be ugly. If we play like we did against Georgia Southern, could be an interesting one. I'd like to see these teams. You know, I want to see a little bit of fight, man. We just These guys in the building know we just lost an S-tier recruit. Right? Maybe that's a kick in the ass to play better. Oh, my God. Breaking ankles, two heads on the football, 35-yard house call for 22, and he's he's probably poised to have a gigantic day. This might give us the best shot. I mean, Slate is usually a money play, but not so much with this team because you just never know what we're going to get from a snap-to-snap -snap basis. Like, you tell these guys, hey, run in a straight line. You think they could do it. Sometimes they surprise you. If you see what I see. Drop the safety. Actually, I tried to get that back to X. I think this got to be an ugly one, to be honest with you. I'd love to turn it around. I'd love to not be doom and gloom after a drive each. I don't know, though. we got to move a third and four. They are in scoring range. Kane has been having a day here against 50. Make a play on that. Oh, my God. That was floated up for a pick six. Oh, we got fucking... Who is this guy? 90 speed? How does he get out that fast? All right. Easy does it, man. Methodical drive from Marshall. And Get jammed up in traffic. Why was open and then he slowed down. Uncut jabs. Just don't got that dog in him. Look at that. Hey, okay. Hell yeah. Wilkinson with some pressure. An interception there for Mike Beckton. Depth corner. I do remember a time. I don't know if there's stamina fatigue going on. I, you know, 
I remember there was a time Crease McCool, if you can see a little bit of an edge, you're not catching him. Last couple weeks, every and anybody's getting him. Not making anybody miss, not seeing any of that speed. We're in four down territory at this point. No safety there for Tito Williams, but likely we're not going to have enough time. My team's run out of steam. We, we used everything we had left for the rest of the year against Georgia Southern. Oh, okay. I mean, I was going to say, the only guy that could have stopped him was his teammate in front of him on that screen. Well, we're almost at that 28 point. I can sim out white flag. That will be cool when that happens. Put us out of our misery, please. It's like one of those memes, like Brock Purdy if he didn't have superstars. And again, fucking turn your head around. Two bombs that are right there just fucking clueless. That he's playing football. This guy's playing too much Power World. Yeah, run into your teammates. That's what we need. We're going to go for it because, hey... There's a shot they get 28 before half, and we can go right to Georgia Southern next week. Or, or is it do, no, it's Southern Miss? We get to that Southern Miss game. Maybe we'll have a better shot there. Is this a fucking. I gotta get a replay. Like, there's no way. There's no fucking way that we're like that off. How are we hitting these? A game ago. That, this is the third time. We're looking at it now. This is the third time this is ha like no arms, no. Yeah! Let's go, baby. Luke Ziban. It's not even Marshall's starting quarterback. Gets the dagger. So we can get out of this one. And uh, focus. And, and get out of here and focus on Southern Miss. Hopefully we can craft up uh, a hell of a game plan for Southern Miss. Because this is uh, this is bad, man. This is, this is, this is what I thought I was going to be getting, honestly. Given how bad our team is, but... Doesn't make it any less painful to sit here for 30 minutes at a time and just get fucking smashed. It's not even going to smash. Plays are there to be made. My guys are like, nah, nah. Three fucking Hail Marys where my guy's just like fucking doing cardio. All right, let's get this one. Oh, I don't want to exit. Let's get this one out of the way. Southern Miss Corso is taking them in this matchup. 3-8 gets 4-7. and seven. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to feel with a somewhat good feeling about my team. So, here's hoping for the best. And a team that has struggled all year to stop the run closes their season against Frank Gore Jr. So bring a little pressure on third and one. They're clearly going to try to run it. See if we can shoot the A gap. Ooh. We, well, we, not the right gap. But hell of a gap to do it. Big time play. Both linebackers getting there. Fourth and inches. I think milestone wise to close up the year. I do think Crease McCool getting a thousand yard rushing. Only thing attainable unless we have another like 200 yard game for Tito Williams. So maybe we do uh, just force feed McCool. And see if we can get him a big time buck 60 type game. Which he, he has you know, a couple times this year. Got up there. But not with how our team's playing. It is night and day. 
we were competitive. We had a couple fun plays, a couple splash plays. And it's the Philadelphia Eagles. The wheels have fallen off. Players have lost hope. Everyone's slower for some reason now. And we had Tito Williams there. Sack, fumble on Podolski. How oh, brutal. Pulling teeth. Pulling teeth. Needs to be a pick. That needs to be easy pick. Terrible drop by Ricky Tyr, our highest rated defensive back. It was there. Read that screen like a book. And it almost feels like that's how we're going to score. It has to be like some sort of defensive touchdown. And we got our guys making plays like that. Just give, get something to go our way, please. Begging you. Does feel like, though, on third and seven, any play we keep this ball in the quarterback's hands and they're not hanging it, handed it off there to Frank Gore Jr. is a win for our squad as we get a nice tackle there and likely force a field goal. Yes, sir. Ben did not break. College kickers. This jinx worked last time. Come on. Shake it. That's money. I want to go for it so bad. Need to play. It's been what? This would be quarter, quarter five of literally like did we did we get a first down? Let's be aggressive and. Oh my. I made this up. See, like this difficulty, this enrage. I I made this. I created this for myself. So we're we're gonna chill. What somebody uh Frank Gore. Couple tackles broken like no one's business. So you go for it. If we go for it, it's closer to that 0 and 28 sim, and I can put the offseason in this episode. That'd be awesome. I want to get to the offseason right now. So that's what we're going to do. Either we're going to get an awesome play, or we're going to fucking throw it seven yards over my receiver's head. And honestly, we might just got a face mask there. This fucking guy keeps popping up. I'm cutting him. He's getting cut. This, Even though he's my taste in milk and play a bunch, he's getting cut just so we can get rid of that graphic that keeps popping up. Bring a blitz here. Third and two. Nothing to lose. Frank Gore's not on the field, which is a win. Oh, hey, there we go. Fuck your couch. Nice sack, and we hold him to a field goal attempt. And they miss it! Way to capitalize, offense. That's what we're doing. We're either going to get a fun play or closer to Simmons. Come on, fun play. I'm team fun play. Might seem like I'm over it. I am very much team fun play. Let's go, Joe Vicious. Had right bumper. Takes us nine years to get that throwing started. Throwing motion. Definitely uh, good things. We're picking up a lot of things Tom Savage needs to work with for old Podolski for this offseason. Because we got some we got some athletes, some recruits that are coming in that might be suited to play quarterback. Let's go, Bob. Let's go, Big Bob. You're playing for your job here. Seven footer, let's go, Jaquishak. Thirty-one yards, see. When you when you don't care, when you play like you don't care, and you go for a fourth down, you don't punt. You play like you're playing your little cousin, your little nephew, your brother. Good things start to happen. You play carefree. You get big time plays like that, and somehow, some way, we are in this game for the second half, and we get the ball to start the second half. But we're going to stick with what got us our seven points. And that is remain aggressive. Now they got two. Why do they have two guys lined up on Williams like that? Come on, please, for the love of God.
All right, we hold them to fourth down. What are they going to go? If they go for field goal, that's no harm, no, no foul. They make that one, okay? Let's go, Joe Vicious. How do you feel like house call? Uh, I don't even know. Like, it's 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 a double-edged sword. Like, we have to target him because he's going to be the guy that gets open. But at this point, does it even matter? It's almost embarrassing if he gets open. The lack of... He had 200 yards! What happened? Did he, like, cash in all of his bucks? Just... Well, I like the only guy tackling him there tackles him once he's two yards in the end zone. I like that effort. I mean, yeah. Well, to the off season we go. Our final bit of recruiting. We're down to two. And that is 0 for 2 on the offensive line. Again, I wasn't ex expecting us to get either of the linemen, even though we did gain ground on uh, the one that got away. We started so late, it was always kind of against us to land some linemen. And definitely looking forward to next year's recruiting class being aggressive right away on any of the three-star athlete linemen. But a little bit of a bummer. Really was hoping we could improve our offensive line. It's going to have to come from lots of film study. And this team just grinding during the offseason with what we got in the building. Since we're sitting on the couch, conference championship week, we'll use this as an opportunity to laugh at the teams that somehow finish below us in the Sun Belt. Because that must mean you're a real ass. And we, uh, hey, two teams we beat. So at least, you know. Makes sense. Beat Georgia Southern. Beat Louisiana Monroe. Shout out that ULM game. That was a game we brought all of our recruits. That was a big that was a big week for us. So let's also take a look at our stats here for the inaugural season of the Hollywood Tech Honey Hunters. Bob Podolsky. 1,900 yards, 16 touchdowns, 15 weeks. More tutties and picks is a win. Priest McCool, 900 yards rushing, 11 touchdowns. Did we get at least 100 receiving he did. So we went over 1,000 yards from scrimmage. That is a win. Tito Williams, very much a love-hate. Insane production when he catches the ball. But can he catch the ball consistently? Like, I hope he gets on the jug. I'd love to see, like, plus 10 catching come his way this offseason with training. 700 yards, 8 touchdowns. That's an absolute miracle he got that, considering what we saw the last three games of the season. Defensively, Teddy Frazier leads the team. By far in tackles with 56. We got 11 TFLs, three sacks from BD Wells, nine and four there for Talon Wilkinson. DeMar Kane, you can only imagine if he played the full season, he probably ends up leading the team in both those categories, but you feel pretty good about him. Redshirt freshman for Kane, freshman for Wilkinson, freshman for Wells. So these guys are going to be here, and they're only going to be able to develop and get better. Three picks for Rideout, ladies, the team. Two picks from Ricky Hightower as well. And again, a young team. A lot of our starters, freshmen, sophomore, couple juniors here, more so on the offensive line. But I, I do think, you know, it's not going to 100% have to be our recruiting class. It has to be day one starters. We're going to have guys already on this team from year one that I think can still develop into big time players for us. After one year, one year rental on Todd Savage, he is going to re-sign with Hollywood Tech against probably his better judgment. He really wants a couple off seasons here, at least one more off season, to work with this group. Here are the players that are leaving. Most notably, Jerry Joe Vicious, return man, the ultimate frisbee star. We're losing Ricky Tower, who's our highest rated corner. We're losing Colt Williamson, who was our highest rated lineman. Van Saka, the soccer player, I believe he's heading towards the MLS. Pour one out for fuck your couch. Lord knows where he's going. He's going to Walmart. He's going, he's literally just, he's going to Walmart. He's going to live in the parking lot. Shockingly, no one from Hollywood Tech gets drafted. It will happen someday. There will be a first ever Hollywood Tech player in the NFL. And we'll celebrate it. We'll be here for it. The good news, we got a couple guys wanting to join the team here from the transfer portal. We're getting Mark Haven Brownlee from Ball State, 66 overall. 
Let me see. Can I see the stats? 93 Excel. I mean, that guy looks... Nah. We got Jared Morrow. I'm taking every offensive line we can get. Plus, also, that looks like a guy that fits the parameters of an athlete. 6'5", 280. Yes, sir. We got Chaz Shambliss from Georgia. 78 linebacker. I'm not saying no. And then lastly, we got Nicholas Chevaudi. 6'4". Sure. Take everyone but the running back. Welcome to Hollywood Tech. What? You're getting a Georgia transfer. Going into the last stage of recruiting, we are competing for two player signatures at this point. So over 10,000 points feels the, the most logical just to split them and see if we can finish out our first ever recruiting class with two nice weapons. There we go, baby. Backed up the Brinks truck. Got two DBs projected to be safeties, which we certainly need. Not too shabby for our first ever recruiting class. Still very bummed out from where we started at the beginning of this video to where we are now that we missed out on that 96 acceleration guard, which I'm telling you right now, I would have moved him to running back just for fun or fullback, and we would have used the fullback. But, uh, you know, we got some playmakers, 72, 76, 71. So three 70-plus guys, and let's be honest, most of these recruits are, as long as there's just not a lot of dupes, which there will be because they're athletes and they're probably going to play the same five positions. We'll have to get a little creative. But most of these guys are going to be true freshman starters for us next year. But the position changes. I'm not going to go through every single one of these because, let's be honest, it's, it takes forever. I'll, I'll show you guys the interesting ones. I'm telling you right now, I just, I was like, I'm going to start from the bottom work my up. We have Jason Jackson here, who was projected to be a defensive player. He could cut out the O line. We could 67 center. Done. There have been a lot of like wide receivers, DBs. Pretty typical of an athlete. We've got another. It's very undersized, but it's still a gigantic jump off of what we currently have in the starter. Right now, our current starting right tackle is 57. So taking a 6'3", 250 lineman at 66 is, is still a massive upgrade. we got to take pretty much any guy of this athlete class that can go and play and be above a 60 O line. They're going to play there. And we got Daniel Newman, who we were hoping would be a lineman, and he is going to be a 69, so we're going to plug and play him there at right guard. And it really saved the, the creme de la creme, the highest rated player of our class. He, Vince Miller here, is going to be a quarterback. He's going to have to go into a mid-time competition with Podolsky to supplant him. We have Keith Alexander, 6'5", 215. So, uh, we're going to put him at wide receiver. So he's already a plus 8 at 71. So that's plus 12 overall, bringing him in at wide receiver. So that is a big get. And here's, here's the biggest one. Greg Webb. So he was a 62 three-star athlete, 6'7", 62 at face value. He's a 78 wide receiver, 6'7", 223. That's his highest position. I was like, oh, he might be a good tight end. Terrible tight end. That's my favorite recruit of the whole class right there. So here is a very, very integral point of this offseason. That is our development of our athletes. All these guys, another full offseason, getting to learn football watch tape i love the fact that the transfer from georgia just gets another plus three giving us an 80 plus player which is insane i love seeing bob podolsky go up plus five look at that awareness jumping up to 36 what about throwing stats throw power plus one up to 98 plus four to his accuracy that is a win priest mccool got a nice plus five his speed is up again a lot of these guys getting you know they should be getting bigger chunks of awareness a crease with cool with a plus five. Plus four there. Rich with a plus three. What did Tyson Williams catching go up to? For the love of God. Goes, yeah, plus three. I mean, at least he broke the, the 60 threshold. Maybe that will help a little bit. But he's up to a 68. We got your quiz shack, plus four. O-line across the board. Getting some nice upgrades there. Yoko Zuna into the 60s. Kaminsky into the 60s, even though they're likely going to be backups this year. Talon Wilkinson. Breaks the 60 threshold. DeMar Kane up to 62. Wells and Sawyer in the 60s. Gilchrist up into the 60s. This guy, though, Shambliss. Damn. Right out after three interceptions. Only apply. I thought he might get a bigger boost. Three picks. Should be worth nine picks if he was actually, like, an awesome player. 
doing what he did is a sub 60 overall but i'll take the plus five let's not get too greedy high tire with a plus four i mean again these people are going to be depth now so it's you know our special teams unit got a big time boost kicker dunkaroo plus five we got the biggest boost who did the best job can we even see that oh but i'll go with it we're gonna wrap up year one of the hollywood tech honey hunters thank you guys very much for tuning into this episode and i'll tell you right now actually right now the number one thing i can promise you there's going to be some behind the scenes battles which we will highlight to kick off year two but it is going to have to be Bob Podolsky's job to lose. I think a couple of the guys, the carryovers. Yes, we got a great recruiting class. Yes, we got some 70 plus wide receivers. Yes, we got a transfer from Georgia at linebacker. But a lot of the guys, we reward loyalty. We reward guys that can learn and know this Tom Savage system inside and out. So while you may see Tyson Williams who dropped goddamn every freaking catch, I, I think we got to give him an opportunity. Say over. Uh, You gotta sit out of here. Get him out of here. Like you know, he's not. Oh, that's why he's not actually on the depth chart. You know, they're gonna play. They are absolutely gonna play. He's an all-American for God's sakes. Okay, he learned how to catch this off-season. But I actually forgot that in NCAA, all these red shirts. They got like the tackle we just got as a transfer. Does that mean Shambles can't play, or do we get an immediate transfer? He can't play. God damn it! Oh, well, at least we got an eighty-plus linebacker next year that's gonna help us out thank you guys for watching won't be won't be too long i love playing this so i'm gonna want to get right back into it but thank you guys very much for watching as always your first time stop by don't forget to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed until next time it's your boy c4 say peace and i love you have a good one and go honey hunters